Our thought for today is, food prices are so high, I even cry over unspilt milk. Today we look at the first reading again from the book of Genesis, the covenant that God made with Noah. And really you could summarize the whole Bible in that one word, covenant. That's what the Bible's all about, the covenants that God made with the human race and with his chosen people, and then how it's fulfilled in Christ. What is a covenant? It's a partnership, much more than a legal contract. For example, marriage is a covenant between man and woman to be loving and faithful and committed to each other, and where they work together for common goals, where they develop this relationship and remain faithful to one another. So in the Old Testament, there are five covenants, and each covenant was made either with, a, for example, individual or a family, a tribe, a nation, or a kingdom. And then these covenants each come with a sign. The first covenant was with Adam and Eve. So the first covenant was with, with, with a married couple where God blesses them, tells them to be fruitful and multiply, and God makes certain promises to Adam and Eve. And the sign of this first covenant is the Sabbath day of rest. The second covenant that we heard about in today's first reading is with Noah. And notice the covenant with the first covenant with Adam and Eve was made with a couple. Now this covenant with Noah is made with a family. And again, God blesses Noah, tells them to be fruitful and multiply. And to, God promises never again to destroy the earth through a flood. And he gives us the sign of this covenant, the rainbow. The third covenant is with Abraham. And Abraham's name before was Abram. God changes his name to Abraham because he become the father of many nations. And this covenant is made not with a couple, not with a family, but with a tribe, with the chosen people, the Jewish people. And God promises that Abraham's descendants would be more numerous than the stars of the sky or the sands on the seashore. But God promises Abraham uh, and the sign of this covenant is, is circumcision. That's the sign of this covenant that the chosen people will be different than all other nations. The fourth covenant is with Moses. And so we move from marriage to a family, to a tribe, now to a nation. Moses, the leader of this nation of Israel, and God again promises to bless this nation and he gives us the sign of this covenant, the Passover, the saving of the firstborn, where the angel of death would pass over, where they would take the blood of the lamb, place it on the doorpost, the angel would pass over, and they'd be saved, and then they would be saved from slavery in Egypt and given freedom in the promised land. And the last Old Testament covenant is with David. And so we, again, we've moved from marriage to family, to a tribe, to a nation, now to a kingdom, to King David. This covenant is made with David as king and with the kingdom of Israel. And the sign of this covenant would be that the Messiah would come from the line of David, that one day there would be a great king, a great Messiah to come from his line. Notice though that in each of these cases, Adam and Eve, Noah, Abraham, Moses, David, they, there was sinfulness and there was disobedience. And so notice that all these covenants were broken by man. God will always remain faithful to his promises, but sadly, the human race or the chosen people would sometimes be unfaithful. They would sin, worship false gods, they, the immorality. Sometimes they were carried off in exile, Babylonian, Assyrian exile, but then God gives us the last, the greatest, and the final covenant by sending his own son, Jesus Christ, the son of God. And at the Last Supper, Jesus uses the word covenant. The only time he uses the word covenant in all his teaching is at the Last Supper where he takes the bread and wine. And he says, this is the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. So the Eucharist is the new and everlasting covenant. How do we enter into this covenant relationship with God as followers of Christ, as Christians? It's through baptism. Baptism incorporates us into the covenant relationship with God, 
In the Old Testament was circumcision, New Testament, it is baptism. So baptism makes us sons and daughters of God, and then that covenant relationship with God, which we're given in baptism, is strengthened every time we receive our Lord in the Eucharist, his body, blood, soul, and divinity, this new and everlasting covenant. Sadly, if we sin, we get, but we get reconciled. We go back to confession, and reconciliation restores us with this covenant relationship with God. So that's what this reading is about today, and that's what really the whole Bible is about. The Old Testament is really, the other word for testament is covenant, so the Old Testament is the Old Covenant, the New Testament is the New Covenant, and it is through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So what is our response? We're called to respond generously as a partner with God to be faithful on our end, to continue to grow in holiness, to frequent the sacraments, to go to regular communion, regular confession, daily life of prayer, reading of scripture. So our job is to respond generously to God's covenant relationship with us.